Good morning, this is Dr. Regilovsky of the Piast Institute. Uh, today, we would like to, as part of our regular series of talks from the Piast Institute, discuss the uh, story of Hamtramck, or at least part of it. Hamtramck's been in the news recently uh, because of elections which brought the first Muslim majority city council. Uh, and people have asked, uh, Hamtramck was a Polish city. Is it still a Polish city? Uh, what was its history? Hamtramck has a very, very interesting history. It's one of the most unusual cities in the, in the state of Michigan. Hamtramck was once a large township, totally unincorporated, wild, no government, uh, that covered the east side of Detroit. That has very little to do with the history of the city of Hamtramck. In 1900, a farm community made up largely of Germans, some Irish farmers, uh, incorporated on the site of the present city of Hamtramck and called it Hamtramck Village. It was roughly the same size as the city of Hamtramck. It had about 500 people. It's just about this time that Polish immigrants began moving from the area directly to the south uh, to the city of Hamtramck. The Dodge brothers were putting up a factory here, and it was the natural area of expansion for Polish immigrants who had settled in downtown Detroit. And so the Poles came here to work in the factories, but also to create a new community. By 1910, the city had about 4,000 inhabitants. By 1920, it had over 48,000 people. It was the largest growth of any city in the world in a 10 year period. So it grew from about 4,000 to about 48,000 people. The vast majority of the people who moved here were Poles. There were other groups that came. There was an adjacent Slovak community. Uh, the area attracted uh, Jewish people who had also come from Eastern Europe, who served their customers uh, both in the old country and here. Uh, and there were Jewish policemen in Hamtramck, uh, the store owners. There's even a, a, a Jewish cemetery in the city. Other groups that came in were uh, Ukrainian immigrants, Byzantine Catholics who came from Austria, Hungary. And one of the things that surprises people, between 1900, when the village of Hamtramck was incorporated, until 1930, when Hamtramck had reached about 56,000 uh, plus people, Hamtramck was the, had the largest African-American population of any city in the state of Michigan, even more than Detroit. By 1930, Detroit had caught up. So Hamtramck was 7% African-American and so was the city of Detroit. So it has a very old African-American population which grew up with the Poles. The oldest church in Hamtramck was St. Florian's, founded by the Polish immigrants. The second and third churches were African-American churches, St. Paul's AME and Corinthian Baptist. They came at the same time as Our Lady Queen of Apostles. And finally, uh, the uh, church uh, in the center of the city, which is St. Ladislaus. So there's an old population of African-Americans who are here three and four and five generations who live in the same houses their, their grandparents built, very much like the Polish population. And many of the African-Americans who grew up here spoke Polish uh, because that was the language of the people that they lived with and worked with. Uh, so right from the beginning, Hamtramck was a very unique place. It reached its height, as I said, in the 1930s when the auto industry was booming and the Polish population was moving in, not from Poland any longer because immigration was, was cut off, but moving here from Pennsylvania, from Southern Ohio, from towns, mill towns in New York, from the copper mines of the Upper Peninsula, and especially, of course, from the coal mines. And so the Hamtramck was an area of second migration. Most of the people who came in the second migration were people who had come originally from the Królewstwo, Russian Poland, or from Galicia, Austrian Poland. 
And so this was probably the height. At this point, Hamtramck probably was about 75 to 80% Polish, which is probably as Polish as it ever got. But Hamtramck was dominated, and obviously with such a large majority, uh, in terms of politics and other things, uh, by the Polish population. It became an institutionally complete community, as Poles often built such things. One never had to leave Hamtramck. It was a walking city. You could shop here in Polish. Uh, all the shops that you ever needed, religious goods stores, food stores, shoe stores, clothing stores, were here. You could go to church here. And you probably were able to work here, even though the, the main work establishments, such as Dodge, Maine, were not owned by Poles, but they were within the city. At one time, Hamtramck actually had 200 industries, many of them small, but within the city limits. It was also the most densely populated city in the state of Michigan. 56,000 people in 2.1 square mile. It still is, <laughs> to this day, the most densely populated uh, city in, this, in Michigan. The current uh, density is about 10,000 people per square mile. So Hamtramck has always been a very interesting place. Um, it has grown and now it's begun, it, then it began to shrink after 1930. Much of the population was very young. If I, lo I looked at the city of Hamtramck uh, in the 1920s and 30s, and I realized how dramatically uh, young the population was. The height of the marriages at St. Florian's Parish, which was the largest parish in the city, uh, was between 1916 and 1918. The height of the baptisms, the children born to those marriages, was in the mid-1920s, 1923, 1924, 1925. By 1930, 1931, the parochial school at St. Florian's, which went from the first grade to the eighth grade, had over 3,000 children in the school building. These were the men, young men in that, that parish who were then 18, 19, and 20 years old when World War II broke out. And so they went to serve. They went to serve because they were patriotic. They were glad to be Americans. They understood the cause of Poland, where their relatives were still living. They were also young. And the army was looking for young people. And finally, of course, they were working class. And they were not people who got deferments uh, to serve in some other capacity. The city, the city sent an enormous amount of its population to go to the military. St. Florian's alone probably sent well over 3,000 young men to go to serve. The latest figures we had from were from 1944 and they were almost 3,000. So Hamtramck made a tremendous contribution to the war effort. After the war, these young men came back. And here you had a whole generation of people who lived the most formative years of their young lives away from the community. They came back imbued with American patriotism and a desire for the American standard of living, which President Roosevelt promised the returning veterans. And they had advantages of the GI Bill. And so they didn't want to stay in Hamtramck, which was crowded. There was no room to build houses. They didn't want to live upstairs among over their parents. They wanted to get married. And so using the GI Bill for education, but especially for, for home loans, they began to move out. But much of the population still stayed, the older population. Some of the young veterans who returned were able to find housing and work here. And so the city remained very intensely Polish. I was asked not long ago by a reporter from a newspaper in Dearborn, when did the Poles leave Hamtramck? And I said, they never did. <laughs> they died here. <laughs> They're a people of place. 60 and 70 years, 80 years, they lived in the same houses that their parents had built. However, their children, their grandchildren moved out. Bigger houses, um, more expensive houses, because they had better jobs away from the inner city. Um, so, but Hamtramck was not abandoned and people ran away. They stayed here for their entire lives and they maintained 
the city and its institutions. Now the population of Hamtramck has dropped. Uh, the current population of the city is 22,256. Probably the Poles make up 10 or 11 percent of the population, roughly about 2,000 out of that 22,000. But it's, Hamtramck is still a destination. One of the things that marked Hamtramck was that it had its own administration and almost all the mayors, in fact all the mayors of the city of Hamtramck, were Polish, as was the city council for much of the uh, history of the city. It was a hundred year run and it was, uh, it was a very good run. The reason Hamtramck was so important was that there was a reform of the government in Detroit which effectively excluded the Poles from any political participation. So this was the one place where you could actually have a Polish officials, a Polish government, and a city that was friendly to the culture and religion of the people. And so that's one of the reasons they stayed. But one of the most interesting things is that Hamtramck remains a Polish destination. Probably even if all the Poles move out, uh, people will still want to come to Hamtramck to find things Polish. And in fact, cultural institutions, stores and other things have actually expanded here. So people come by buses from Toledo and other places to go to the Polish Arts Center to buy uh, sausage at Shrodix. Uh, so Hamtramck will remain, even if there aren't too many Poles here, as a kind of place where you can sample what it is to be Polish. And I think that's, that's an important uh, um, reason for the city to continue to exist and maintain its, its reputation. Uh, the Poles have so imprinted themselves on the city that no matter who's here, uh, for many years to come, this is still going to be a Polish city.